There's only one man in the entire U.S. government who is being punished for the failure, the catastrophic failure in Afghanistan. Just one man. His name is Stu Scheller. He is lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps. He is an honorable and honest man. He is also blameless. Scheller had no role in any of these decisions. What was his crime? His crime was criticizing those decisions. In August, he posted this video on the Internet. If an 05 battalion commander has uh, the simplest live fire incident EO complaint, boom, fired. But we have a secretary of defense that testified to Congress in May that the Afghan National Security Force could withstand the Taliban advance. We have chairmen of Joint Chief, who the commandant is a member of that, who's supposed to advise on military policy. We have a Marine combatant commander. All of these people are supposed to advise. And I'm not saying we've got to be in, the, in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? So that's an honorable man you just saw on the screen. That's a man who's in it for the right reasons, not to get promoted or work at Lockheed, but because he cares about the country and wants to defend it. There's a man who believed in his superiors, who is not cynical, who is genuinely confused by his superiors' unwillingness to admit their own error. His confusion comes from decency. And almost immediately, his superiors reacted to that video. They didn't apologize for the disaster. They didn't explain why they did what they did. They punished Scheller. They relieved him of his command, and they told him to shut up and stop talking. But he didn't stop talking. Here's how he responded. To recap my position in the fallout of Afghanistan, I demanded accountability of my senior leaders. And I stated then that I understood that I might lose my Battalion commander seat, my retirement, and my family stability. As it has played out, I have in fact lost all three of those things. Would I do it again? I don't know. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, and I was the only officer in the entire American coalition fired in the debacle of Afghanistan fallout. I acknowledge that I should have been fired. However, the hypocrisy of the general officers who are not being held to the same standard is a microcosm for the entire problem that is going to bring down the great institutions of this republic that we love. So that's the man you want serving in your officer corps in a serious country. A person who takes his job seriously, who's patriotic, who's honest, who demands accountability. And before you say, well, it's the military, they don't have freedom of speech, you're not allowed to give a political statement, two points. One, that was not an explicitly political statement. In contrast, two point two, the endless number of openly partisan statements from the leaders of the Pentagon. Mark Milley was openly thrilled by the election of Joe Biden. Was he punished for that? No, he was elevated. And Congress, again, just rewarded him and the entire leadership of the U.S. military with 24 extra billion dollars. But Stu Scheller? For telling the truth? Well, here's what happened to him. Military brass forced Stu Scheller to undergo a psychological evaluation because only a crazy person would ask for accountability after the disaster in Afghanistan. And then when he wouldn't admit he was crazy, they threw him in prison, in jail, where he sits tonight. Scheller's father just released this statement explaining that his son is now behind bars with violent criminals. And how long is he there? He's there indefinitely. This is happening tonight in America. Here's a quote from his father. All our son did is ask the question that everybody was asking themselves, but they were too scared to speak out loud. He was asking for accountability. In fact, I think he even asked for an apology that we made mistakes, but they couldn't do that, which is mind blowing. They had a gag order on him and asked him not to speak. He did speak and they incarcerated him. They don't know what to do with him. It's one of the worst stories of our time. And there are a lot of bad stories right now. Tony Busby is one of the lawyers representing Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller. He joins us tonight. Mr. Busby, thanks so much for defending Thank this you. man and for coming on the show tonight. So if we misstated anything, is he in jail right now? He's sitting in jail right now uh, with no formal charges against him. Uh, supposedly, there's supposed to be a hearing uh, on Thursday, but he doesn't even know what he's charged with. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, he still remains under this illegal gag order. So this story broke, I think, last night. In that time, how many members of Congress have reached out to you to say we will no longer approve a single promotion in the U.S. military <laughs> until this, this prisoner of conscience is freed? A, a lot? None. 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 And I, and I tell you what's, what's more, more, what's more uh, infuriating is that today we had 
testimony in the Senate where uh, they tried to make the case that uh, the withdrawal was an operational success. Uh, it's not a success, of course, to the 13 families who lost loved ones. Uh, and when somebody tried to speak out and, and say, look, we could have done a lot better. We owed these Marines and sailors and Army personnel better than that. They, they not only told him to shut up, uh, when he didn't shut up, they put him in jail. Uh, he's a married man with children? He's a married man, yes, with children. And, and I would say his spirits are high. Uh, the, the support, not, not, of course, congressional support, but the support that we have received, that he has received, that his family has received, has been overwhelming. People see this for what it is. They see this from the top, the top brass trying to shirk responsibility. And when somebody in the chain of command speaks up, they're silenced. And we can do better than that. This is a man who is a 17-year Marine, a Marine officer, uh, an infantry officer, just like I was. A guy who, whose conscience uh, required him to speak out, and, and the, the American military, and specifically the United States Marine Corps, the, the entity that I love so much, has, has put him in jail for that. And people are, are just coming together all over the United States. The, the uh, pipe hitter uh, organization, the foundation, has raised already $200,000 for his defense. This is wrong and won't, will not stand. You think of all those members of Congress who, you know, serve six months in the JAG Corps somewhere and brag about their military <laughs> service and how, you know, they're for the troops and here are 24 extra billion dollars saying not one word about this honorable man who is the best of America rotting in jail with criminals tonight for telling the truth. It's, it's beyond belief. It's disgusting. It, and I appreciate Tony Busby, your defense of him. And I hope you'll come back. Thank you. Will do. Dan Holloway is a veteran of the United States Army. He's host of the Drinking Bros podcast. He joins us tonight with Reaction. Dan, thanks so much for coming on. If any mis miscarriage of justice, injustice, atrocity kind of crystallizes the moment we're living in, it, it's this, I think. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, Scheller asked for accountability, and what he got in return for his years of service and his loyalty was persecution. It's, it's insane. And, and speaking of insanity, as you said, they, they sent him to mental health to get checked out because you'd have to be crazy not to agree with the administration, right? And that's the message that's being sent to America. It's not only are we right, not only is the government right and the administration right, not only are you wrong, but you're not entitled to accountability. You can't think for yourself. And if you try for any, either one of those things, we're going to throw you in jail. That's the message that's being sent right now. It's incredible. I mean, Things have changed so fast and so radically, but if you told me two years ago that there'd be people sitting in jail for trespassing at a political rally or for releasing a YouTube video in which he asked his superiors to own up to their failure, they would literally be jailed. I would say, this is America. Like, that, we don't do stuff. Jailing people? What? No. And here, here it is, and nobody seems to think it's weird. Yeah, it is very bizarre. I mean, there, I think the real question is, how have we gotten here? How have we gone from Eisenhower to Milley? in America. Uh, yeah. Think about this. This whole mandate nonsense makes no sense. We all know that it's not really based in science at all. So you have to wonder what the purpose is. Qui bono, right? Who benefits from this? For the last few years, the left has continuously chipped away at all of the institutions that protect America, you know, the, the military, the police, masculinity itself. And you got to wonder where they're going all this. Now they're using all the division they've created to basically gerrymander the ranks of these institutions, the Pentagon and, right. and, and, and the police services and things like that. And it's, it's a calculated move, in my opinion. You, gotta, you tell me, Tucker, what, why would a political party want to gain control over the institutions that protect our country, right? I mean, because that, they that, have that's very that's suspicious. Why. Right, right. No, that's, it's, and they're gerrymandering the ranks of the armed institutions in our society. And that's just a, that's a really smart, and correct way to put it, I think. And I appreciate that. I'm going to steal it going forward. Dan, thank you. <laughs> it's all yours. Thanks a lot. So the Biden administration is forcing millions of Americans to take a vaccine they, just, they don't want. This show is just learned from a source inside the Biden administration about what's in store for people who don't obey this unconstitutional order. We'll tell you next.